The average person spends three hours a day on social media. Just think about that. Three hours. That's 45 full days per year spent scrolling through posts, videos, images. And what fascinates me about those three hours is the majority of that time is spent in complete silence. We're watching, we're reading, but we're just scrolling. We're not engaging, we're not contributing, just scroll, scroll, scroll. And as a digital marketing professor, I noticed a striking number of missed opportunities here. For every thousand members in an online community, only 10 actively participate. For every 100 people who view content online, only one engages. And so I think about that 99% of people who stay silent. They don't engage, they don't contribute. And it's not just about those missed opportunities, but when we don't engage, the loudest voices take over. And we see these echo chambers, these digital spaces where the perspectives are outrageous. And so, without our diverse participation, misinformation spreads, and it's unchecked. And polarization, it deepens. And so, too many voices go missing, leaving only a few to shape it. And the issue here is that silence, it's not neutral it actually can shape the conversation. It can reshape us. In fact, when we, say when we stay silent and we don't engage, we disengage from the discussion. We disconnect from each other. And research shows that that time spent scrolling actually alters our brain activity. It weakens our social bonds, and it leaves us feeling more isolated. We are more connected than ever before, but we feel more disconnected and isolated than ever before. And so, I study the intersection of technology and human behavior and human connection, and I found three triggers, three psychological triggers that determine whether we stay silent or we speak up. And so the first personal trigger, psychological trigger, is personal resonance. When we can relate to something, we engage. When you see something online that has to do with your job, with your hometown or your passion, you stop scrolling, and you think about engaging, right? And these online platforms, they know how to leverage this psychology. So LinkedIn will show you content around your industry and your profession. Discord will help you connect with communities that you're passionate about. Personally, I do a lot of research on digital marketing, but when I'm on Instagram, it knows that I have a really hard time getting my kids out the door in the morning. I have a seven-year-old and an almost two-year-old, and it's chaos. And so when I see something online that has to do with advice for parents, ways to talk to your children to motivate them to get to school on time, I stop scrolling. I engage, I like, I comment, I ask a question, 
I save it, and I share it with my husband, hoping he can figure it out, help me out. And so when things resonate with us, we stop and we engage. The next psychological trigger is perceived safety. Before we engage, we always do a scan for social risk. Think about all the times you've thought about posting and hesitated. Or maybe a friend posts something very personal and very vulnerable. And at first you think, I'm going to comment. But you hesitate because you think, well, what if I say the wrong thing? What if my comment doesn't matter? And what if no one likes my comment? And so you don't respond. And this hesitation, it's hardwired in us. But we can push past it. When we feel safe, we engage. The last psychological trigger is potential impact. We engage when we believe our contribution matters. When we think we have something of value to share. And you think about it, why do people, you know, fill out Wikipedia forms online for free, right? Why do experts in an area go into online forums, strangers, and share detailed answers to questions? It's because when we perceive impact, we engage. And so let's think back to those extreme voices that dominate when we say silent. And let's think back to how we have the capacity, but meaningful interaction shrinks when we don't engage. And so if we can understand the triggers, psychological resonance, perceived safety, and potential impact, we can break this pattern. And any one of you can decide to break this pattern if you're wanting to build stronger connections. Maybe you're a thought leader and you want to share your expertise. And maybe you just want to feel more connected online. And so you can transform yourself from this passive observer to a more valuable contributor. The idea here is we really need to rethink how we connect. We need to rethink how we communicate and how we create value in the digital world. And as someone who works in digital transformation, I've uncovered a three-step approach to breaking digital silence. The first step is to make your expertise uniquely yours. We all have something that we're experienced with, that we're knowledgeable about, where we can add value. So I want you to think about what do you know deeply? What's that expertise that people come to you for advice about? But I also want you to think completely beyond that, not just what you have experience and expertise in, but what personal story has shaped your expertise? And how can your experience help others? So let's think about a fitness coach. Spending years posting generic fitness content, the best ab workout, how to do a push-up, maybe nutrition facts. But there was a problem. There was no engagement until this coach did something different. She started to share her personal story. She started talking about her struggles with body image during college, how she overcame unhealthy habits, and how fitness gave her confidence and changed her life. And that's when things changed. People connected with her story. People saw themselves in her story. And they stopped scrolling, and they started to engage. They liked her content. 
They asked questions, and in fact, they even shared their own experiences. And the impact? Well, her business became more successful because she made fitness personal for her audience. And so the takeaway here is that personal, authentic storytelling is what fosters connection and drives meaningful engagement. The next step is to find your safe spaces. The internet, it's not one giant audience, right? It's a collection of micro communities. And so let's take an example of financial advisors. Their pursuit was to help young professionals with their debt, their investments, and savings for their future. And so they sought out financial advice social media groups. But when they got into these groups, they noticed some big problems. These forums were dominated by these extreme influencers with get-rich-quick, tricky schemes. Misinformation spread fast because these spaces were unregulated. And financial advice that they were trying to give, it was dismissed or even distorted. And so they had to change their game plan. And they had to find professional communities where, that were fact-based. They had to find platforms with strong moderation, strong community guidelines that were upheld. And they had to join conversations where their expertise was actually needed and valued, where real-world people were asking genuine questions and where they could add their value. And the impact? They became respected thought leaders in the financial advising industry. The takeaway? Not every space is worth engaging in. The right community is where conversations can lead to real change. The last step is to identify opportunities for meaningful impact. And here is where you think about your expertise, but then you have to find that right community. And when you find that expertise in that right community that needs what you have to offer, that's the sweet spot. That's where impact happens. But it just doesn't happen because you're speaking the loudest or you're speaking. You have to listen. And you actually have to listen for what topics matter to that community. What are their pain points? What keeps them up at night? And for example, there was a mental health nonprofit, and they really wanted to reach college-age students. And they felt pretty ignored by Gen Z until they realized this broad communication plan they had, it wasn't working. They needed to find out where their community was hanging out. And it was online, on social media, in Reddit forums. They were in mental health-related TikTok communities. And so they found where they were hanging out, but then they need to find out what really mattered to this group. And you know what mattered to them? Academic burnout, social media, comparison, and isolation a need to feel that they belonged, a need for community, and a real stigma around therapy. And so when they reframed the conversation, they were able to increase engagement around their mental health resources. They were able to increase turnout at their mental health events. And they were actually able to create a shift in how people talked about therapy. And so, the takeaway is that impact happens when your expertise meets a real need. So, 
I want you to think back to those three hours that you spend scrolling. What if we could take a fraction of that time and engage purposefully? Because I think together we can transform digital spaces. So I challenge you to think, what story are you holding back? What idea, what insight, what experience have you never shared? Because your voice does matter. Your experience, it has value. And there's a conversation that needs exactly what you have to offer. And so the next time you're scrolling, 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 I challenge you to ask yourself, will you stay silent or will you speak up? Thank you.